The sun had barely risen over the horizon in Morocco, Indonesia's easternmost city, located in the province of South Papua, but Mr. Gonja Pranowo, one of three presidential candidates for Indonesia's election next year, was already set to start his day. The date was November 29th, the second day where candidates were allowed to campaign during a 75-day official campaigning period, and Mr. Gonja was dressed in a long-sleeved black T-shirt, leggings and a pair of running shorts to start his daily morning routine, walking and running. Just the day before, Mr. Gonja and his team arrived in Morocco after taking a non-stop chartered flight from the country's capital Jakarta at 1 a.m., landing six hours later. The distance from Jakarta to Morocco is about 3,700 kilometers, which is equal to the distance between Jakarta and Taipei. Campaigning or not campaigning, exercising is necessary to be healthy, said Mr. Gonja, adding that he had participated in many marathons in the last 20 years. I need to train myself, I need to be disciplined. Just like him, Mr. Gonja said, pointing to Mr. Andika Pagesa, the deputy chairman of his campaign team, who was walking alongside him. Mr. Andika, Indonesia's former military chief, who retired in 2022, is known to be an avid weightlifter. He told CNA that he woke up at 3 a.m. that morning to do some weightlifting. Mr. Genja's resolve to stick to his morning routine of running to keep fit, despite being away from home is indicative of his ambition to be in tip-top shape should he win Indonesia's presidential election next year and take office. With the endorsement of his political party, Mr. Gonja began the campaign trail in his bid to become Indonesia's next president in the restive region of Papua. Limited access to healthcare and education as well as a lack of infrastructure are problems locals experience in the impoverished city and region of about 240. 000 people. During his morning run, Mr. Gonja stopped and waved at passers-by, occasionally chatting with some. I used to cycle. But one day, I fell. So my wife said, let's do something else. Since the incident 20 years ago, we have started walking or running or, if I don't have much time, swimming, he told CNA, who accompanied him for his morning exercise exclusively. Despite his packed schedule and the long trip to Morocco, Mr. Gonja was cheerful in his exchanges and impromptu visits, a trait he developed during his 10-year tenure as Central Java Governor, which ended in September. He remained smiley and cheerful when answering questions members of PDIP seemed to avoid, namely about President Joko Widodo. Mr. Widodo is a member of the same political party as Mr. Gonja but does not appear to be endorsing his comrade for the election next year. Mr. Widodo's 36-year-old son Gibran Rekabaming Rocker is a vice-presidential candidate running alongside 72-year-old Defence Minister Prabowo Sabiento, who is also chairman of Indonesia's third-largest party, the Great Indonesia Movement Jirindra. Mr. Prabowo is vying to be president for the third time, having been defeated twice by Mr. Widodo in 2014 and 2019. Jokowi, as the president, is popularly known. Cannot run again because the constitution only allows a president to serve for a maximum of two terms. Although Jokowi said he is backing everyone, many believe that he supports his son and Mr. Prabowo. This means he is deviating from the wish of PDIP, the party that brought him to the top job. The move came as a blow to many especially those within PDIP, and some analysts believe it is a form of betrayal against the party. But is Mr. Gonja actually surprised? Every time there is an election, there are always surprises. But I am fully aware that a person has the right to vote and has a political stance. He told CNA with a smile. And if that's the case, then we will be different. 
that's the decision. PDIP announced Mr. Gonja as its presidential candidate in April. He was the third and last person to be announced as a potential presidential candidate after Mr. Prabowo declared his intention to run again in August last year. Former Jakarta Governor Anis Baswedan was the second, having been endorsed by the country's fourth biggest party, the National Democratic Party Nostem, in October 2022. When Mr. Gonja was first announced by PDIPS chairwoman Megawati Sokanaputri as the party's candidate, he was leading in a number of polls as the most popular potential presidential candidate. This, analysts attributed, was due to Mr. Gonja's similar leadership style as Mr. Widodo. Their backgrounds are also similar, having come from humble beginnings. But things took a turn for Mr. Gonja and his popularity began to dip after Mr. Widodo started showing signs that he was leaning towards Mr. Prabowo, triggering support for the defence minister. When Mr. Prabowo announced Mr. Gibron, Mr. Widodo's son, as his running mate in October, several surveys show he is the frontrunner, overtaking Mr. Gonja. In the latest opinion survey, Released on December 27 on who the public will vote for in the upcoming election by Think Tank Center for Strategic and International Studies size. Mr. Gonja and Mr. Moffat came in at last place among the three pairs of candidates with an electability rating of 19.4%. The survey saw frontrunner Mr. Prabowo and his vice presidential candidate with 43 7% of the vote while Mr. Ennis and Mr. Muhaimin received 26.1%. A day earlier, pollster Indicator Politik released its survey that showed Mr. Prabowo and Mr. Gibron leading as the most preferred presidential and vice-presidential candidates with 46.7% of the vote. Mr. Gonja and Mr. Moffat came second with 24.5%, followed by Mr. Ennis and his running mate Mr. Muhaimin, who received 21%. Mr. Gonja acknowledged the reality when asked whether Mr. Widodo's apparent support may give a certain presidential candidate pairing an advantage. Well yes, there are always certain advantages. And then people will consider and choose, Mr. Gonja told CNA. But we, from PDIP, this party has been around for quite a long time and has been taking part in elections, not just once or twice. But many times, he said, appearing unfaced by the lack of support from Mr. Widodo. We have been through the dark times of democracy many times. And we have gone through it all. Said Mr. Gonja, confident that they too will survive this current setback. PDIP has existed for 50 years and was one of the only three political parties in Indonesia during the reign of authoritarian President Suharto until he stepped down in 1998. In the years before Mr. Suharto was forced to step down, triggered by violent nationwide protests, his government tried to minimize the party's force. The party's experience is reflected in how Mr. Genja's team prepared his campaign trail, ambitious and symbolic. Mr. Gonja held his first campaign stop in Morocco, not without a reason. His running mate, vice presidential candidate Moffat MD, currently coordinating Minister for Political, Legal and Security Affairs, started campaigning from the other end of Indonesia in Sabang. Asse province. Sabang is Indonesia's westernmost town of the archipelago. We deliberately chose these two points in Indonesia. One at the eastern end, where the sun rises, the other at the west end, because we want to unite Indonesia, like the third principle of Indonesia's five principle ideology. Said Mr. Gonja on day one of campaigning in the remote and underdeveloped district of Semenga. Morocco Regency. We chose this village because this is actually where our community gathers. We chose this because of our love for this land. 
he said, followed by loud cheering and clapping of hundreds of Papuans who attended the event. During the event, Mr. Gonja launched the program One Village, One Health Facility. One health worker to provide villagers access to health care. Mr. Godefridus Gaps, a resident of Samanga, said he is thankful that a presidential candidate like Mr. Gonja wanted to visit them to see the real conditions on the ground. We have never been visited by a presidential candidate, one who goes to a village like this, said the 36-year-old, who works odd jobs. We need many things, especially roads. And Mr. Gonja has heard this from us. When people want to seek medication, they are hindered by the lack of roads and an ambulance nearby. That's what we need, he told CNA. After visiting Samanga, Mr. Gonja returned to Morocco City to hold dialogues with youths. At next year's election, 204.8 million people are eligible to vote and more than half of them are young people aged between 17 and 42 years old. Mr. Gonja also met local Catholic leader, Archbishop Manager Petrus Conicius Mandogi. Unlike most parts of Indonesia which is predominantly Muslim, the country's Papua region is predominantly Christian. When meeting Mr. Gonja, the Archbishop expressed his admiration for Mr. Gonja and his vice-presidential candidate Mr. Moffat. I love Mr. Gonja, Mr. Moffat. Even though you have experienced challenges recently, take it easy. This election is a moral war. Who has morals, he wins. Who is humble, he wins. The arrogant ones will be gone. Convey goodness to the community, said the Archbishop. The Archbishop's advice comes amid reports that Mr. Genja's billboards in some parts of Indonesia have been destroyed or taken down by people who do not want him to win the election next year. CNA has seen billboards of Mr. Gonja which were destroyed, particularly in the face. When asked how he felt about it, Mr. Gonja said his team had conveyed this to the Election Commission and the General Election Supervisory Agency. He hopes that civil society will also help monitor the situation. Even though there are indications of fraud cheating, it may be difficult to monitor everything since Indonesia is so big. So the role of civil society is also important, he said. Mr. Gonja, who is a father of one, may be used to facing bumpy roads. Born in Karangania, Central Java, Mr. Ganja's father was a low-rank police officer. Mr. Gonja told CNA that he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps but failed the police entrance exam twice. He then studied law at Yogyakarta University of Goja Moda and developed a love for being active in organizations. As a student, he participated in numerous protests, including one to protest the evictions of residents for a local reservoir project. However, he told CNA that he realized he needed to be in the system to institute real change. Therefore, he joined PDIP in 1992, which was then just known as PDI. In 1996, PDI experienced internal conflicts, which led to the establishment of two factions. One was hated by politician So Jodi, backed by the Suharto government, and the other by MDM Megawati, which eventually became PDIP. Mr. Gonja stuck with MDM Megawati and a few years later became a legislator and subsequently Central Java's governor with her blessings. Nevertheless, when Mr. Gonja said in October last year that he was ready to run for the presidency, he was forced to apologize. It was said that MDM Megawati did not like him jumping the gun as she is the decision-maker at PDIP. She was reportedly also still hoping then for her daughter, House Speaker Puan Maharani, to be the party's presidential candidate. Yet, Mr. Gonja 
who like Jokowi, is a Metallica fan, became the party's sole presidential candidate. Despite most polls showing him lagging behind Mr. Prabowo, will Mr. Gonja be Indonesia's second Metallica fan president? God willing, we are optimistic because we have prepared all troops with strength from the political parties and the volunteers. He told CNA. And remember, there are still many people who have not yet decided, and this is what we are currently working on continuously.